Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me in another painting video. Today we're going to paint a rabbit because it's the year of rabbit. Now that's pretty much just an excuse for me to paint something a little bit different. It's been a while since I painted a small animal and to paint a cute little critter is really pleasant. So I start off with a basic line drawing. Now, even though this looks really simple, there's still a little bit of underneath structure that we need to be aware of. That's why I still spend a little bit of time doing the drawing. Even though this is not a human portrait, it's a lot more forgiving. We still need to figure out the basic structure and the basic alignment and perspective. It doesn't have to be a photocopy of the photo, but it needs to look believable. Other than that, the way you choose a subject is also very important. I went on a royalty-free stock photo website and I looked around quite a bit and picked out this one to be the painting subject. Small rabbits, they are all very cute, very lovely, but not all of them are suitable for painting. Now after cleaning up a little bit of the line drawing, it's time to get ready for painting. Now I'm using a masking fluid pen to preserve some of the highlight for the whisks because they are very thin and very light. So I decided to use masking fluid pen. Now you can use white gouache to add the highlight later, but I think masking fluid gives a much cleaner result because if you use white gouache afterwards, you need to make it very thick for it to become that white while masking fluid preserve the white of the paper. And I like the effect much better. So here I'm mixing some basic color that I'm going to use for the first swatch and I pre-wet the paper because I want to paint some color of the light. If you look at the photo, you can tell that the light is very warm on the left side and the right side, while it's very white, you can see a little bit of cool light because the right side is probably the skylight and the left side will be the sunlight. The sun looks pretty low, so we got some warm sunlight. And while the sky is probably very blue, so we still got that fainted blue light on the rabbit. So even though the rabbit fur is white, because of the light, the color is going to be a little bit different. Overall, the rabbit is quite bright, except the bottom occluded shadow where the rabbit is sitting on and touching the ground because very little light can get in there, it's very dark. So aside from that and the eye, the rest of the rabbit is mostly pretty light. Now I leave a little bit of the hard edge for the cast shadow underneath the rabbit's mouth. The sun is hitting the rabbit's head and is casting a shadow onto its neck. So to give it a little bit of hard edge to interpret that as a cast shadow. Now because it's mostly wet on to wet and it's just the second layer, I don't want to make it too dark just yet. Add a little bit of flesh color on its ear. And now I can go in there to paint the nose and the mouth. Now those are also dark tone. So after we paint some dark value, we have a reference of how dark we can go and how other values compare in relation of the dark and the light value. So use a small brush and paint the nose and the mouth. And I also go ahead and paint the eye. This is just the first wash of the eye. So I will come back later and paint some darker value. And now that I know how dark I can go, I can have confidence to darken some of the shadow shape. So sometimes it is important to establish the lightest light and the darkest dark in a painting. So you have a reference of the spectrum of different values. So I'm painting the color of the shadow. I want to have a little bit of warm and cool inside the dark value as well. So I will try to push the color a little bit, adding some cerulean blue to make the color cooler. And if I want warmer color, I might add a little bit of burnt sienna or even a little bit of orange. 
And now that we establish some basic value, you can start to feel the form of the rabbit. Now I want to make the rabbit feels brighter, so it's time to do some background. Now I pre-wet the background because I want to have some fuzzy edges, which means I need to do some wet onto wet. Now this part is a little bit tricky because wet onto wet is a little bit harder to control. So I do a little bit of test on the side, see how that looks. And then I start to add a little bit more color. Now I need to be careful not to paint too much. Otherwise it's going to seep into the rabbit. So give it a little bit of the space outside of the silhouette of the rabbit so it has some room to grow. But as you can see on the right side, we feel that fuzziness of the fur. So if you know how to use a soft edge well, you don't need to paint thousands of tiny little fur. You just need to give that illusion of the softness. So the same thing on the left side. Now, because I already used masking fluid, I can just paint over it. But same thing, I need to leave a little bit of gap so the paint will not sip in to the rabbit too much. Now, one thing that's a little bit tricky about wet onto wet is that because there's already water on the surface, it will dilute the paint that you are painting with. So that means you need to mix your mixture a little bit thicker if you want to have a darker value. And because watercolor dry lighter, we need to compensate for that. So here I'm trying to mix a little bit more color and try to add some more color onto this layer. And I try to do that before the layer is dry so that we can maintain some soft edges. So especially on the bottom where the dirt is, we want to make it nice and dark. Now by adding some dark background into the painting, the rabbits start to feel lighter. And here I realize I actually want background behind the rabbit's ear as well. The long pointy ear is such a important element of rabbit, so I want to bring them out as well. So I re-wet the top part of the painting again, and add some background colors. Part of the background is already starting to dry, so you start to see some hard edges as I paint down. The weather is pretty dry here, so this tends to happen. So I will have to work with it. I will try to soften some of the edges with a clean damp brush, but also a little bit of hard edges is also fine. You don't have to make everything looking very soft because that can make the painting look mushy. So a little bit of hard edges can make the shape and the form more clearly defined. Paint some foliages and vegetations in front of the rabbit to push the depths a little bit. Now that being said, they are just part of the background and tiny little bit of foreground element so i'm not going to define them very realistically they are just different shades of color and different abstract shapes and i'm continue to darken the bottom of the rabbit the occluded shadow to make the form pops even more and also push the contrast so the rabbit looks lighter Now it's the time to paint the second layer of the rabbit's eyes to really push that contrast of the eye. Now be careful not to paint all over. We need to leave a little bit of highlight to hint the reflection in his eyes. A few more details on the ear. And after look at it for a little bit more, I want to push the contrast even further, so I go back to the background and just paint another layer of background. And because the background is all dry, if I want to keep the soft edges, I will have to re-wet them. So start from the ear and the neck of the rabbit, 
paint some darker soft shape and we bring that shape out and we continue around to the other side adding more earthy green make the color more opaque and as we do that you can see the rabbit become lighter and lighter and that's because of the contrast by adding some darker color to the background the rabbit become lighter and that is what I want that is what I'm going with and again because watercolor dries lighter sometimes we need to go back and push the dark to create more contrast it is possible to overdo it sometimes, especially if you paint too many layers, the painting can start to get dirty. So it's best if you can do it once, if you can mix the proper mixture and paint it once. But it's much easier to sit than done. That is why I go back and add more dark. But try to limit the amount of layer that you use to maybe three, maximum four layers. If you paint any more than that, your painting might start to look dirty. So for this painting, I did wish that I was able to get that dark on my first layer for the background, but I wasn't able to, so I have to keep going back to it. So it's not as clean as I want it to be, but it's not too bad, so I can live with it. It's fun to paint something a little bit different once in a while. It gets you out of your comfort zone and keep the painting fun and fresh so you don't get tired of painting and here's a finished painting and as you can see after i take out the masking fluid the whisk look very nice and clean and bright i hope you enjoyed this demo happy year of rabbit this is eric from cafe watercolor wish you a wonderful day wherever you are take care and i will see you next time